Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so I uh, wanted to share some stuff with you guys. I really don't do tour type stuff here with the toolboxes and all that stuff because it's just, I don't, I don't know. I don't see the point. Um, it's just tools, but I wanted to share this with you guys because I think it's really cool. So, a uh, buddy of mine, as you guys know, <clears throat> gave me a, uh, an eight channel Pico scope. I mean, what do you say, right? That is unbelievable. I'm gonna show it to you guys on the camera here. This is the uh, 4823 Pico scope. It was uh, purchased at AES Wave and uh, it's really, really freaking amazing, okay? I've hooked it up to try it. As you can see, double the pleasure, all right? Plus, this thing also has a signal generator on the back. I don't know enough about this yet to really speak on it. I don't know its capabilities, its limitations, and all that type of stuff. I'm gonna to talk to some of the other techs that, uh, that I network with, and I'm gonna ask them and see what they could tell me about it as far as that goes. So, time will tell on that, but either way, having a signal generator is really badass. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can put to use on you know in testing. So, uh, with that said, I want to show you guys. Now you're gonna have to excuse this because, in all honesty, the cart is still in progress. So don't beat me up too bad here about uh, you know organization and all that stuff. I have I, I came in today. It's Labor Day. Happy Labor Day, by the way. Uh, I came in because I wanted to get some work done on this thing. So last night, let me actually just show you, make it easier. I know I haven't really gone over this stuff much, so we'll see what I can, what I can show and, and we'll go from there. All right, this is the boom that I made, okay? And I think you guys have seen some of the other ones that I've machined for gentlemen out there and uh, I made this one as a prototype for myself to try out when I had put the other cart together. In all honesty, I threw it together. Uh, I had a small piece of aluminum to work with and I used it. And I mean, it does work even though it's extremely crowded, okay? I'm not, I'm not thrilled with this, it never was. And my plan was never to have this as my permanent setup. So with that said, I also made this rod adjustable. Okay, so I, I can, you know, take it up or down or whatever I want to do and <clears throat> it'll rotate as well now again the base of this I'm going to utilize anyway I'm going to keep this what I'm going to change is the top part okay the actual boom and I'm going to show you I machined up a new one yesterday and this here is going to be the new one. This one is about 30 inches in length. This one being about 30 inches in length, as you can see, is far larger than the other one, okay? But, <clears throat> also, I, I made this, you know, for my own application here, so I machined eight slots, or actually nine slots here, for the Pico leads, okay? Uh, for the dedicated leads for the, for the Pico, which I'll show you in a minute. Then I have myself some uh, square holes, rectangles, just to keep clamps and such on, and everything can stay, you know, organized. And I'll have I'll have plenty of room to uh, to do what I need to do. Unlike this small one that I'm battling with. Okay, so the only thing left here is I'm going to have to drill a couple of holes for the mount and countersink them, and then we'll get that mounted on there. Maybe I'll engrave this, I don't know, we'll see how I feel later on about making a, uh, making a stencil. But uh, I'll clean this up nice and shiny, and I'm probably going to leave this bare aluminum this time instead of, uh, instead of painting it. But uh, that's, the, that's the boom. And then I'll show you over here, let me move you guys over. And we'll kind of go through the cart a little bit at a time, okay? So here, as you can see, is a block. All right, this is made out of, uh, I wanna say it's some sort of ABS plastic. 
you guys are probably no better than me. I roughly machined it. It's, it is smooth, but it's, you know, rough cut on the machine. Uh, I have my measurements written down here, so when I take it home tonight, I can finish it. And this is going to look like this when it's finished. So they are the same. They're machined down to the same dimensions as far as the uh, width and height. And the only thing left here now is for me to machine the part here and then do the edging and stuff on it with a chamfer and uh, clean it up and then, you know, that's it really. So <clears throat> at that point, I'm going to, I'm going to do what? I don't know. Well, I'm going to mount this here, okay, next to this one when this is finished and I'm going to label the the channels with color codes as I have on the uh, on the four channel the other thing is that inside my cart is my Pico obviously okay and as you can see I got this idea a while back from some of the other guys out there I think it was Super Mario uh, if you haven't checked his channel out please do he's fantastic and basically what I did is I, I cut out a slot here on the cart I'm gonna have to cut another one um, and I got these extension leads BNC extension leads. The reason for the reason behind this is, is uh, myself, like these other guys, do not like ch touching the BNCs on the scope. The more you keep touching a connection over and over and over, the more chance you have of the connection spreading, of getting damaged, of essentially not working at some point, or even just breaking completely. And then your scope is going to be sent in and repaired, or you're going to be buying a new scope. Whatever the case is, I mean, I'm sure these can be repaired, but you're gonna be down. So with this, if something happens here, you just keep some of these extra extension leads. And if something does happen to one of the BNCs on the outside, then it doesn't really matter that much. You just change it out and you're up and running again. So you're essentially hardly ever touching the scope connections itself. And for any of you guys to use the scope for testing, you're gonna know that swapping out uh, different tooling on the scope, for lack of a better term, uh, you're going to you're going to be doing that quite often so if you want to current ramp something you're gonna need an amp clamp if you want to check something with uh, higher voltage you're gonna throw an attenuator uh, onto the onto the you know onto the scope okay so you know primary ignition for instance so all of this stuff uh, it saves the scope from getting damaged okay that's basically where we're at so what else um, I showed you the block, I showed you the scope, and I showed you the boom. So the card itself, I mean, is n oops. so the card itself is nothing spectacular. It's just a four draw um, blue point card. I couldn't stand having the name on it. I took it off. So working on stickers. If any of you guys out there that sent me stickers in the past would like to do the same. Uh, any YouTubers, please send them. I'll be happy to display them on the cart. Uh, so far, I've got my own, obviously, and I've got my Train by Text, which I'm very proud to support in any way possible because those guys are fantastic and can't say enough about them. So, uh, what else? Well, the drawers I'll show you guys, but again, don't mock me. <laughs> I have a mess right now. I'm working on stuff. Uh, okay, this is my... This is a Surface Pro 3 that I just picked up recently, refurbished from the manufacturer. Uh, I bought this when I bought the E-Scan. I have not done a video on the E-Scan because apparently once you buy an E-Scan, you never have a drivability problem come in again. Um, scares them off. So I have not used that in testing yet. We will get to that uh, hopefully soon. This is all miscellaneous stuff in here, some batteries. I got my... Uh, my OBD2 connector for, uh, for my 4Scan, which I have set up on both the tablet and the laptop. Test lights and such, some, some uh, what do you call, some um, probes and miscellaneous stuff, like I said, you know, adapters and attenuators and such. So that's that drawer. And again, this is all a work in progress yet. And if you guys are curious, no, these don't come black. I know some of you guys that have them are asking right now or saying uh, they're chrome. They are chrome. I, I plan to dip these black. I don't like chrome. So that's that. <clears throat> In this drawer, we have uh, a few secondary pickups. Um, we have some homemade stuff, some paddles, some homemade paddles. 
for uh, for picking up secondary uh, spark tester, fuel sample tester. Again, organizing this, it's uh, it's you know it's a work in progress. I want to get the main stuff done first. These are my uh, Pomona uh, leads. Well, back probes, I should say, not leads. And these things are sweet. Uh, picked these guys up on eBay. The guy bought them and apparently forgot he had them in his toolbox for a long time. Decided to sell them. Uh, very nice tool. In here, got my fluke. Uh, another thermal gun that also was a gift from another friend of mine. Uh, miscellaneous connectors and such. And um, some old style back probes from Wicon, which are still very good. Some jumper leads. Uh, got a bunch of stuff in here. More stuff from AES Wave. And uh, this is the U-Isolate, by the way, for the can. Uh, so we've got a bunch of little toys in here. Some extra parts for a fluke. Got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, these are the goodies. I got my power probe bob. I got some uh, homemade pressure sensors that I mill that I machined on the lathe at home. I got a few of these laying around in here, I believe. Yeah, there's a couple of more. So got these guys. <clears throat> I'm going to set everything up, I think, when it's all said and done in a um, in foam, and I'm gonna cut it out and make it neat, but I have a WPS on the way, so we'll see. I'm gonna have to organize everything. Homemade pressure transducers. Um, these are the leads from AES Wave for the new scope. Not the U-scope, the new scope. Uh, these are the little jumpers from there. Also, this is the same idea as what I was talking about before. You would have these plugged into the, to the scope and then you would just make your make and break your connections here at the flexible joint and on the eight channel scope this is handy because the connections are tighter uh, far tighter together closer together than the um, than the four channel 4425 uh, Carlos also hooked me up with uh, four new attenuators 10 to ones so got a lot more channels to, uh, capability now to play with so need more goodies uh, that's really about it. Yeah, it's a headlight. You guys know what that's for. Load testing. Um, and on the bottom of the cart, there's really not a lot to talk about. I got my U-scope. I got my um, my bore scope, the Vividia. Uh, some fuel pressure testers and some other miscellaneous stuff that I use a lot when I'm doing electrical type work. So it's, it's like I said, a work in progress. Um, we're, we're, going to, we're going to make it better. I want to I want to actually show you guys while I'm talking about the what I was talking about with the scope and the difference in the modules uh, how the connections are so if I lay one on top of the other you guys can see how much tighter the 8 channel is as opposed to the 4 channel so that really tells the story, right? Um, that's why if you're trying to put attenuators on here or adapters or whatever, it's going to be very tight and you really don't, like I said, you don't want to damage the scope. So uh, Carlos's fix was the mini extensions, which work fine. Um, for me though, I, I got to see if I'm going to actually use them or not. I, I doubt it, honestly, or maybe I'll hang them off here. I, I don't know. Now, so like I said, the, you know, Carlos did send those, those short leads, those adaptive leads, which will work fine. And I may still use them off of the end of the cart. I gotta see how things work and what I, you know, how I feel about it after it's all put together. But uh, fantastic setup all around from AES. I, I actually think that those little short extensions work good if you're hanging the scope. Um, I, I don't know, I gotta play with it. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I wanted to share this with you guys. I thought you'd find it interesting and maybe it'll help some guys get ideas for what they want to do with their diagnostic carts. For me, this works. I mean, for somebody else, maybe not, I, I don't know. But I think it's gonna come out all right. And, uh, you know, we'll get use out of it for sure. So that's it.
Guys, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, the kind words and the comments and the support. Really appreciate everything. And so we'll, we'll see what kind of diagnostic videos we have coming up. Uh, you guys have a great, safe Labor Day. Take care.